Hello everyone. This video is the continuation of the previous video lecture, which was lecture number 4A. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the path search algorithms and we especially we discussed about, we learned about how the breadth first search algorithm works. So in this video, we shall learn about how Dijkstra's algorithm works. So Dijkstra's algorithm, this is an other algorithm for graph search and its purpose is to find the shortest path in the graph. Same like we did with the breadth first search algorithm. We found the, our goal node and we also made the path shortest. But the problem was with breadth first search, search algorithm that it was not applicable to the weighted graph. And now what is a weighted graph? We have already learned it. So this is an example here of a weighted graph. A weighted graph is the graph with edges which, which have different types of weights. For example, 5, 3, any values, any cost. So this, this is called weighted graph. If you want to find a path here from A to F, then we, we cannot apply here the breadth first search algorithm because it doesn't work here. So that is why we have to apply another type of algorithm which, which is called Dijkstra's algorithm. So yeah, so um, one thing again I, now you, you, there, there should be one question in your mind what is the real real life example of a weighted graph why i'm doing why we are doing it okay so it's uh, it's easy to answer for example in these kind of search algorithms they are applicable in real world for example a robot has to move from one place to another place and let's say this is our environment we have here this is let's say a uh, an outdoor environment and this is our start position here we call it okay s and this is the target position here and then here we have a obstacle here let's say a, a house we have a house here and robot is not allowed to go there and here we have some kind of uh, a, a bad okay let me make it with another color okay let's say here we have a grass in this area and on the other side we have let's say a little bit wet road there is a little bit water here also and our robot it must move from start location to, to our goal location or the target location you can say so now what is the what is the best or the shortest path shortest path if you if the robot goes from for example here then this region, the green grass region, it may have more slippery or it may not slippery, okay, it has more like uh, bumps and jerks maybe. So that's why we give here a little bit more cost to this area, okay. We say, okay, free space, if let's say free space is zero and this will have a little bit more cost, the green area, let's say it has a cost of one and this has a cost of let's say if a robot goes from here on on the slippery surface then this path has a cost a little bit let's make it more expensive let's make it three cost so this is the real world example it is also applicable in not only robotics it's also applicable in games when you play games for example uh, when you're 
when your vehicle or any any your character in the game wants to move from one place to another place there are multiple paths and some paths are costly because they are more slippery they are more uh, there are more jerks on the road but other paths they are smooth so they have less cost of travel so when we convert when we model this our this real world environment into a mathematical form then we have this graph okay so um, this is our starting node a and then here this is our goal node f and so there are multi there there are intermediate nodes also and from going from a node to c node we have a specific cost and from going from a to b we have a different we have a smaller cost uh, keep in mind that this cost is could also be a distance also distance between cities for example going from a city a to city c it's like five kilometers and then from going from city a to b it's three kilometers so now you see that the the edges the weights of the edges they are the they are related to real world values so let's move forward and see so dijkstra's algorithm have the input to this algorithm what it requires is a graph which is actually a model of the environment and then it, it needs a start point where should it start and target point it's also you can also give it a target point uh, but start point and and the graph they are the two of the most important things um, so what's the output of this algorithm Dijkstra's algorithm has the output it will give you a shortest path between the start node to your target point or your target node actually it gives you shortest path from start node to each and every node when you apply Dijkstra's algorithm on this graph it will give you at the end of the when the algorithm stops it will give you a shortest path between a to c a to b a to e a to d and a to f and yeah so it, it finds all the shortest path in the graph from your start position yes so this this point we have already discussed so let's move to the next slide and here we shall discuss how this algorithm algorithm works step by step and so the first thing is assign infinite value to all nodes and zero to start node so now what we want to do is we want to um, okay let me make this figure a little bit uh, on the top because it seems like I will not able to write down something here we can make it make we can pull it a little bit up so it's visible clearly okay so this this is a graph we have and a is the start position and f is our goal position or the target position and now your your goal is to find your aim is to find the shortest path between a to f humans can do this task very, very easily but for for robots for computer uh, it needs some kind of smart algorithms to find it so the first step it says that you have to assign infinite value to all nodes and zero to start node so let's start it by assign here we say okay this is zero and we call it infinity and this is also infinity this is infinity 
infinite infinite okay so we have assigned these values and now keep a list of visited node so here we shall write here the visited node we shall write down here which, which nodes have been visited after that at current node calculate the cost distance from start of its each neighboring or adjacent nodes so uh, one thing here is missing at first starting from the node uh, start node beginning from the start node you have to assign it you have to make it as a current node okay and also put it here in in your visited node so a is our current node and also a is the visited node now we are at a um, if the if the cost sorry it here is a mistake it's actually a new cost here should be a new cost so let's correct it okay it's a new cost if the new cost is less than previous cost then replace it with the new value so okay so we are at node a a is our current node and visited node and now we look on the its neighbor or adjacent nodes what are its neighbor nodes b and c because a is connected with b and c with edge this edge and here this edge so what we do here now we now try to calculate the cost of the distance from from the start node to b and same is we do for the c so let's do it one by one okay why uh, razor is not here i don't know it's maybe i have saved it okay so let's see what's the distance from a to b it's 3 actually because this edge says that they have a cost or the distance 3. So if I move from A to B, then I have covered how much distance? 3. So I shall put here value 3. And, and what's the parent of this node of, our, of B? It's A actually. So we put it 3p if you remember we did we did same thing we in the bread first search algorithm also and what i do i can change the color so it's visible now because otherwise it, it will not be visible because the infinity is already there Let's make it with blue, okay, or maybe with green is better. Okay, so going from A to B, B will have a cost of 3 and its parent node is A. Okay, and now the, the uh, another adjacent node to node our node a which is our current node or the visited node we have a c now we shall go to c and let's see how uh, how much cost it has so going from a to c it has a distance of or a cost of five so we shall write here five a this is the cost of node c 
and so let's see what make current node as visited node so yes we have already did that here we have said a is our visited node a is also a current node and visited node also okay so the next step is select the adjacent node with minimum cost and make it as a current node so now we shall see that the, uh, the adjacent nodes of a were b and c and which one has the minimum cost c has a cost of 5 and b has a cost of 3 so we shall select uh, b make it uh, make it as a, our current node and also we add it here in the visited node which is b now we are at b so okay what's the next step now okay next step is when target node is visited then algorithm stop so till now uh, the, the target is not achieved the target is not visited so what I forgot to mention here uh, okay I think it's the next step here from goal node track the pairs yes um, I forgot to mention one step here is that when you are here you have to keep repeating these steps from step number five because there are multiple nodes here so you have to go back to step number three here you have to keep repeating this prop uh, this this uh, loop unless you find your target point okay so from here we shall go go to step number three I think I should add here one more step so that later you are it's visible Okay. So now we, we are going to repeat step number three again. So step number three says at current node calculate the cost of the distance from start of its each neighboring or adjacent nodes. Now we are at node number uh, B. And now we shall see what adjacent nodes it has. So it has adjacent node A, C, E and D because it is connected with these nodes using edges. Node A is already visited because it's in the visited list. So we shall not explore it again. And then we have node number C. And now let's calculate the cost of node number C again so this is 3 plus 2 5 because node number um, node number 5 already has same cost but here we have mentioned that if the new cost is less than the previous cost then replace replace this since it's not less the new cost from A to C 3 plus 2 5 is same as cost of a to c directly 5 so that's why we we are not going to change it so what we do here we uh, we also don't do anything we go to now node e and now let's calculate the its cost how much it costs so this will be 3 plus 3 6 so it has a cost 6 
and so let's write down here it has a cost 6 and its parent is node B okay um, similarly when we have calculated the cost we go to the last neighboring adjacent node to node B and calculate its cost which is 5 plus 3 or you can say 5 plus 3 here and this is 8 and we, we write down here 8 and its parent is B okay so now we have explored all the neighbors of B and now let's move to the next step make current node as visited which we have already I think we this step should be um, I think should be before or I should say it later because I, I first add the node and this step comes later so I need to synchronize with this okay let's go to step number five which says select the adjacent node with minimum cost and make it as a current node okay so which one one uh, we have one two three four we have four nodes here and out of these this was already visited we haven't done anything here uh, this one uh, was also we haven't changed anything here we have this here e and here this uh, so we explored the we change values of these two and So here we have uh, these three nodes C, E and D and from here we choose which one has a minimum uh, cost or the G cost you can say. So this node number C it has a minimum which is the 5. So we shall move now to node number C and now we shall make it as our current node. Now we are at node number C and we, now we again go to step number 3 and repeat it the step we shall see how many neighbors or how many adjacent nodes it has C has A B E uh, here A and B are all, already visited but E is E, e has been um, it has been discovered but it's still not visited so let's see that uh, now we shall calculate the cost again from uh, of these nodes uh, let's see starting from e it has already a cost of six it means it is six uh, distance away from the node a but if we look from node c it has a cost of 4 plus 5 or you can say 4 plus 5 which is 9 so if we go from this way then E has more cost because this cost is more than the previous cost so we will not do anything we will not change it uh, similarly or if you look at here uh, this has a cost of 3 already but if we look it from node number C then it's uh, the cost is 5 plus 2 is equal to 7 which is more than and I think it's even because it's already visited so we are not allowed to visit it again okay so we let it like this and we also don't do anything here with A and B we only check E and E has already less cost than our new cost so we don't do anything let it be there now step number four make current node as visited because we have already visited it now we put it in our visited list C okay so now we look at in uh, here in in the From node C, 
we can see that uh, we can go to node number node E because the other two nodes A and B they are already in the visited uh, list we have so we have only option node number E and we now move from node number C to node number E so when we are node number E we shall again repeat step number 3 from node number E we shall look how many neighbors it has it has F, D and B and C B and C are already visited so we leave them like this now we only focus on these two nodes D and F so from D and F D has been already discovered and its cost and parent node also has been calculated but we shall do it again this is a difference here also between the Dijkstra's algorithm and the previous breadth first search algorithm because here we again calculate the cost of the discovered nodes but not the visited nodes only the discovered node so what we do here we shall calculate the cost or the distance of node D but this time through node E okay so node E has a cost of 6 and 6 plus 4 is equal to 10 and but D has already cost of 8 which is less than 10 so here step number 3 says that if the new cost is less than previous cost then replace it but in our case uh, 10 is actually more than 8 so we we shall leave it like this we we shall not change anything here and now focus on now we uh, go to the another adjacent node to node E which is node F and here also we try to calculate its, its cost so here when we see that uh, node E has a cost of 6 6 plus 3 is 9 so we say that this node has a cost of 9 and its parent is E okay so um, now we put here once we uh, we calculated the neighboring nodes costs we the next step is make current node as visited node which is step number four so E was a current node we make it as a visited node and put in the visited list and okay we mark it also like visited the next step says that select the adjacent node with minimum cost and make it as a current node so now we see that from E which is which node has the minimum cost uh, we don't look on the here because A, B, C they are already visited so they are they cannot be further changed the only two nodes which are which are not which have not been visited that D and F and we see that which one has a minimum cost which is so 8 and 9 so it means D has a minimum cost which is 8 now we move from E to node number uh, D so now we are at node number D and we shall repeat the step from step 3 again we shall look at from node number D, D we look at what are its neighbors so B E and F B and E they are already have been visited only there is an option of S uh, F and you, you can also see that um, the cost of moving from D to F is 3 so now we calculate the cost of F again since F has not been visited it has only been discovered before but we we shall calculate is its cost again but this time from node D so 8 plus 3 is equal to 11 11 is more than 9 so we shall not change anything here because node F has already smaller or less cost than than the new cost we don't change anything here 
and the next step says that make current node as visited node so now we make it like visited we say we have visited the node D we put it in this list okay so after that we uh, select the node select the adjacent node with the minimum cost so this this time we only have one node so we move to node number uh, we selected node number F okay so now we make we we move to node number F and F when we uh, when F is our current node we have discovered that okay this is the the goal node that we were looking for this is the target node so once uh, the, the target is reached the forward search this is step number seven the forward search stops because we have reached the goal now okay so we put it like in a visited list here f so so we have uh, actually we have uh, reached a goal now now what we have to do only we have to go to step number eight which says that from goal or target node track the parent node parent nodes in backward till the start node arrives this will be the shortest path so what we do here now starting from the backward node from the from the from the target node we look for we search backward parents for example f has a parent e which is written here we go to node number e so i write here for clarity f has a parent e and then when we are at e e has a parent of uh, b e has a parent b so we go to b And then when we are at B, we look what was its parent and it's written here A. So B has a parent A. And this is also the start position. So this is how we find the path from actually this is a reverse path. And if you want to look at it, the path actually, uh, let's change the color. Make it okay. Now the path if you want to move from A to F, so you just have to move to B and E and F. And the total distance you will you have to travel is three plus three plus three, which is nine. So here I write nine also. Doesn't look like nine. So this has a total distance of 9 and this is the shortest path in the graph. This is the best path you can say. If you, if you, look, if you consider the edges, the weight of the edges as a distances, so this will be the shortest path. Okay. If you consider the edges as a fuel required moving from A to B, then this is the minimum or the least fuel required path you have. So should I draw it here also, maybe in yellow color, orange color. So this is our shortest path. We go to from node number A to B and then B to E and from E to F. Our robot will reach here. It can be a mobile robot, it can be a robotic arm also. So, yes. So, now we see some of the advantages and disadvantages of Dijkstra's algorithm. Uh, one of its properties is that it will always find the optimal path. Optimal means it will always find the uh, best path. 
best can be uh, in any situation for example if you are looking for a distance it will be the shortest length path the path will be less than any other possible path length if you look for a fuel consumption then it means that this path found by Dijkstra's algorithm it will have a minimum fuel consumption okay if you look for a safety if your edges represent the safety and your your goal is to maximize the safety then using Dijkstra's algorithm you can find uh, a path with maximum safety also so in any situation it will find the best possible path or you can say the optimal path okay and another good thing is that it can be applied to weighted graphs unweighted graphs okay and directed graphs also or undirected graphs so this is also it it can be applied to wide variety of graphs so this is the one of the disadvantage of dijkstra's algorithm that it doesn't work with graphs with negative edges so for example if you have a graph like look like this you have a node a then you have node b here and this is one edge let's say this is six and then here you have node c but here it's minus two so now if you apply here Dijkstra's algorithm uh, it will not give you the best result because Dijkstra's algorithm it is designed for only positive weights of the edges the edges must have a positive value if it's negative then Dijkstra's algorithm cannot be applied there are other other kind of algorithms uh, that can be applied but we shall we will we shall not go in this detail because most of time the weights of the edges the value of the edges they are positive and most of the problems they can be solved using Dijkstra's algorithm and regarding the previous point I hope that from the from the previous lectures you remember that what are the what's the difference between weighted and unweighted graphs and uh, what is the difference between between the directed and undirected graphs for example if I make this graph so this is example of an undirected graph okay this one I made it here but if I make it like something like this I make it like a and then we have here an arrow here let's say and then we have b here and this is c let's say so this is an, is an example of a directed graph okay because it has arrows it has directions in it so it means that robot can move from a to b but it cannot go from B to A and similarly from B to A B to C motion is possible but not from C to B so this is un this is directed graph but the other one this one is uh, undirected graph another problem with Dijkstra's algorithm is the high computational complexity if you remember from previous lectures computational complexity was uh, time and space required to solve a problem using a specific algorithm okay so when an algorithm has high computational complexity it means it requires more time and more memory to to find the solution if you remember in the beginning I told that Dijkstra's algorithm find shortest path from start node to each and each node in the graph okay so that is why because it it finds it search for every node it visit every node in the graph 
so that's the reason it has a high computational complexity you remember here if you look at in this graph we have visited almost all nodes in the graph a b c d e f all the nodes in the graph we have visited all of them and so it has find actually the shortest path from so whatever the cost written here on the on this node this is actually the shortest possible distance or the cost of that node so for example on the f it's written 9 so it means f is 9 uh, steps away from your start position and similarly 8 6 so each so Dijkstra has found actually the minimum cost or the minimum distance of each node from your start node but sometimes we don't we don't need that actually we don't we only uh, we only are interested in distance from a to f not a to every node but Dijkstra actually uh, find distance to every node so that's why it has a high computational complexity it requires more time it requires more memory or more space to to solve a problem to find a path in the graph okay so this was some advantages and disadvantages of Dijkstra's algorithm now let's move to um, application of Dijkstra's algorithm on uh, for a grid map so we have seen in the previous example we solved it for the for the for the graph but if we have a grid like structure then how we can do that so this is a grid we have here and we want to find the shortest path from this this uh, starting node green node to our red node which is our target node so what we do here we let's first change the color make it blue okay so first of all we write write down the node names here this is a word node a this is node b and now i shall say abracadabra and all the nodes are filled with alphabets so now what we do we start our algorithm here so the algorithm starts like this let's change the color and make it purple okay so the starting from node a it um first thing i i forgot to tell you we, for this grid for this 2d grid two dimensional grid we uh, we only consider four connectivity okay so it means that every node every cell is connected to four other cells horizontally and also vertically up and down but there is no diagonal connections like this or this so a is connected to b and f but not with g okay but if but if you want more accurate results then you can also uh, consider this connections also diagonal connections also uh, but for simplicity we only consider the horizontal and vertical connectivity okay so a is connected with b and f so now we have we calculate the cost and because this is a this is a grid and grid has equally spaced cells it means the distance between the two cells they they will be same same okay unless you specifically mention it the distance is same almost and so that's why let's say the distance is one so we say that when we move from a to b so the distance is the distance we covered is one so we write here one the cost is one and same is true for f we write here one 
so now we have explored the adjacent nodes of a now we look for which one has the minimum cost because they both have same cost we um, we choose any one of them and alphabetically we choose b now we are at node b and from b we look for c we have neighbors c and g and uh, a is already have been explored so here we again we the cost from b to c is one and from the cost cost b has already cost a one so total cost will be two here and from b to g it will be again cost of two so from b we again look for which one has the which one has a minimum cost they both have same so we repeat the process so we go to node number c we make it as a current node and look at its neighbors d and h so it will have a cost of three this will have a cost of three also and which one has a minimum cost again the same one and we repeat the process we now look make d as a current node look at its neighbors e and i the other neighbor c has already been visited so we we say the cost is four and here also the cost is four because the each cell cell to cell distance is one we consider it take it as a one meter but i should i write down here so from here to here we take the cost as one okay and same is true from from here to here also So whenever we move from one cell to another it means we are uh, moving one step or one cost or one meter away okay again uh, both have same cost we took we make e as our uh, the e as a current node and look at its neighbor e has only e has two neighbors d is already visited and we look at now j and j has a cost of five four because four plus one is five okay now we have um now j has how many neighbors j has j has a neighbor of uh So make the j as our current node here and we look at its neighbors uh, j has i and neighbor l two nodes we have here so let's calculate their costs um, 5 plus 1 is 6 so l has a cost of 6 and from if we look here 4 uh, 5 plus 1 5 but i has already calculated already has been discovered and its cost is four uh, which is less than the new cost five so we don't change it here we let it like this okay um, so now we we look from from j that which which node has a minimum cost so here we have l and i six and four it means four has less value than six so we make i as our current node okay because it has a less cost than l so from i we look at its neighbors h and uh, j they has and k it has how many neighbors d h j k d and h they have been already been um, visited j is also already been visited and it has only option of k and 4 plus 1 is 5 so we have calculated its cost so we now look which one have the so it has only option going from i to k now because other nodes have already been visited so we go from i to k and from k we look at the 
its neighbors. So it has a neighbor of L and P. And we, when we uh, try to calculate their new cost, so 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. But it has already 6 written here, which is equal. So we don't change it. And from here, 5 plus 1, 6. We have assigned it. And now both of its neighbors, let's see which one have the minimum cost. So here we alphabetically we say that okay L we go to L and because both of this it's the nodes the neighboring nodes have same cost. So when we look at L we say that okay it has two neighbors Q and K six plus one is seven here and the the other one here if we six plus one seven which is more than the previous cost so we don't change it so now we uh, uh, let's do one more thing let's make uh, keep a track of visited nodes that will help us to okay make it with yellow okay we have visited this node we have visited this node this node we have visited already so uh, these nodes we have already visited and from k we, we said that okay we have it has two neighbors and both have cost of six then we came to node number l because it was alphabetically uh, it comes first and we visited this also and also we explored it has also one one adjacent node and then from here now we can we have uh, we have only one option to because l has only one neighbor which has a cost of seven so we make it as a current node and also mark it as visited here so from Q we can see that Q has two neighbors P and V um, so the cost from Q to P is 7 plus 1 8 but it has already less cost which is 6 so we don't change it and the cost from going from uh, Q to V is 7 plus 1 which is 8 okay so here both the neighboring nodes uh, P has a minimum cost so we we mark it as we make it as a current node and now look at its neighbors uh, Q has been already visited now we have only option going to u or o and um, if we if we go there we both have cost of seven here and here also seven and then we we look which one have the which one have less cost both have same cost so we choose o and from o we we uh, we look again for the neighboring nodes and this one has a cost of 8 7 plus 1 and 7 plus 1 again and again we have both same cost now we make n as a current node and look for its neighbors 8 plus 1 9 8 plus 1 9 again same cost and then we go to node number m make it a current node and now we say that okay uh, it has uh, two neighbors and it has been already been visited and it, 9 plus 1 10 r is a cost of 10 and um, so r has one neighbor actually two neighbors and has already been visited and uh, s has been already discovered which is the our also the target node and from here we 
we say that okay r the cost the new cost will be 10 plus 1 11 which is more than the previous cost so we let it like this we don't change it okay so that's how we reach our uh, our uh, target we reach our goal position so from here when we once we reach the target we stop the algorithm and now we start looking to the backward uh, where we came from and we if you see that from here we go to n and to o p here was a k i and then we have d c b and a so that's if we try to make a path here make it with uh, make it with make it with brown color so there are there can be multiple paths but So this will be our optimal or the shortest path we have here. So this is how we apply grid Dijkstra's algorithm on the grid based graph and to find the shortest path in the graph. And now we move to the next slide. Okay, we have seen the how Dijkstra's algorithm work, but there are some problems with Dijkstra's algorithm, and the problems we have already discussed because it have to uh, it has to explore and visit many nodes, almost all nodes in the graph. So that was that was one of the problem that that Dijkstra's algorithm was uh, it was uh, computationally expensive. It requires more time. It requires more space or memory to find a solution in the graph, to find a path in a graph, uh, which was sometimes a bit annoying because for uh, for small graphs it it works fine, but when the graph size increases for thousands of nodes, then it becomes too much. Um, it, it requires too much time and too much space, so. To solve this problem, someone came up with another algorithm and it's called A star algorithm. What this algorithm is, this is actually informed search algorithm for shortest path in the graph. This algorithm also finds shortest path in the graph, but uh, this one has the, uh, it has a difference that it is informed. Notice on this word informed. It has some kind of information already. Dijkstra's algorithm, it doesn't have any information about the goal, where the goal is, this f, okay? But A star algorithm, it knows that it has some kind of information where the goal is located, okay? So this is a difference between Dijkstra's algorithm and A star algorithm. When you know that where, where, in which direction your goal is located, so you move always in that direction or near to this direction okay but when you don't know where your in which direction the goal is located then you explore all the possible in every direction search for every in right left forward backward all the nodes and try to search your goal Dijkstra's, Dijkstra's algorithm was not informed it doesn't know that where the goal was located okay so that's why it has to explore all the nodes but a star algorithm it is informed it knows that where the goal is so it will always try to go in this direction and we shall see how it do the, it uh, it perform this action can we apply to weighted unweighted directed and undirected graphs so this is also uh, one of the advantage of a star algorithm that it can be applied all types of graphs except the graph with negative edges so 
it's, it's a bit like here like back straws that it cannot be applied to the uh, negative edges graph okay one thing we have to define here the g cost the g cost is a distance of current node from the start node it's same like we did in Dijkstra's when we calculated the cost of the current node it was actually the node the cost from that node to the starting node for example if I want to calculate the node the g cost of the node b uh, it was how much the distance from b to starting node a so this will have a 3 in the same way if I want to calculate the g cost of node d it will be uh, distance from d to a which is a distance between a to b and plus distance between b to d which will be 8 so this is our g cost the another thing that's uh, new here which is not which was not present in in the Dijkstra's algorithm is the heuristic function what is a heuristic function heuristic function is actually an educated guess about the about uh, what you make to guide your algorithm toward the goal so this is a, some kind of guess that speeds up your search process uh, for example in this case we have the heuristic will be if I if I say that okay go if I want to move from A to F okay and um, the heuristic function will be the distance from uh, the distance of any node from the node F that will be the one of the heuristic function for example I can say that D node let's say D node is node is closer to node F as compared to node C it means that um, D node is should be visited is it because it's more closer to node F so D node should be visited not uh, instead of node C because it is far away so it makes more sense to visit node D because it's closer we want to visit we want to reach F so it means that if we reach the nearest node to F then we have more chances to uh, reach node F okay but if we uh, if we for example let's say there is one node on the opposite side of the of the F let's say in this direction we have one more node and the algorithm starts moving here in this direction so it doesn't make any sense so what heuristic functions tells the algorithm that which direction your goal is located so in which direction you have to move you have to search to reach quickly to find quickly the goal okay h cost is the cost or the distance from the current node to the goal node um, it's actually not the um, exactly not the exact dis distance you can say for example the okay um, so h cost is the actually the distance from the your current node to the goal node it's not the exact distance it's the you can say it can the distance can be can be less than the, the actual distance for example from d to f the actual distance is 3 okay but we can also take like 2 or 1 okay or it it can be less than the actual distance but not more than the actual distance because if it's more than the actual distance then your algorithm will not work properly it will not give you the optimal results so your edge cost which is a heuristic cost is, is the measure of your distance of your current node to your goal node so once again your g cost is the distance let's say b is our current node 
we are now focusing on B. So B node has a G cost of this distance. G cost is equal to 3. And what's H cost? H cost is you can measure manually this distance from here to here. Okay, this is your H cost. And you can measure this distance by literally by some kind of scale and then say let's say let's say this distance you measured it was uh, 4 okay so your uh, at node B your G cost is 3 and your H cost is 4 okay but what we are interested in we are interested in F cost which is the sum of G cost and H cost so f is equal to g plus h. So for node node b, node the f cost of node b is equal to three plus four is equal to seven. So this is the f cost of the node b, which is the current node. So we shall use this concept in in this algorithm that's why we have learned it okay so in this slide this, these were some important concepts that you, you need to know about the a star algorithm and let's move to the actual algorithm so let's see the steps of a star algorithm and how it works the first step is begin with the start node make it as a current node and place it in the closed list so in a star algorithm we have a closed list and then we have an open list okay we have two different types of list and the closed list means that the we shall place the nodes that have been visited in the in this list closed list okay so you can say the closed list is equivalent to a list of visited nodes like we did in breadth first search or in Dijkstra's algorithm. So we have a closed list and in this list we have all visited nodes okay after that so in the first step what we do we begin with the start node make it uh, it as a current node and put it in the closed list. In the second step, what we do, we expand the adjacent nodes to the current node and put them in open list. So this was the first step. Let's say this is our start node we have. And so what we did, we put start node S in the closed list. Let's say we put it in S here. This is let's say our list, close list, and we put S in the close list in the first step, and then we see what are the adjacent nodes to the S, and and we put them in the open list. Okay, so let's say we have one and two nodes that are adjacent to the S. Let's say this is A and this is B. So what we do, we put them in the open list and open list will be another list which have, which contains the nodes that are adjacent and that, that are not visited. 
till till yet so i i donated like o l open list is equal to we have here a and b and so on there will be more also node coming so yes this will be the second step after that the thing is calculate the f cost of the adjacent nodes and mark their parent nodes so like we in the in the previous slide we have we have seen how we can calculate the f cost by adding the g cost and the h cost and we sh we shall calculate the f cost for node a and then node b okay and then we have we have to mark the parent node of b which is s and then again we have to mark the parent node of a which is s also if the new g cost is less than the previous g cost of the node then replace it with the new value of the g cost so this is what we we were doing also in the dijkstra's algorithm so if we see that the the new g cost of the node is less than the already written g cost then we replace it with the new one if it is equal or greater then we don't do anything select the adjacent node with minimum f cost and make it as a current node and replace it and place it in the close list so for example here in this graph we we look at which one which one has the minimum f cost a or b so whatever for example if let's say b has a minimum f cost then what we do we make it as our current node this will be our current node now and also we put it in the we remove it from the open list and we put it in the closed list or the visited nodes list of visited nodes okay and now this will be our current node repeat from step 2 till the goal node is reached so from here uh, what we do after we have completed the, uh, the step 5 what we do we go back to step number 2 here and we again do the same thing start from the current node and explore it adjacent nodes calculate the f cost and then select the node with minimum f cost we shall keep repeating this process unless we until we reach the target and once we reach the target we shall uh, we shall start tracking the parents of each node uh, and eventually we shall reach the source or the starting point and this will be our shortest path so let's see let's see an example of a graph so this is a graph and we want that we want to we want to um find the shortest path in this graph okay and on this side we have a h cost of this graph for the different for the, all of the nodes we have so the h cost you can you see that they are they are uh, values they can be distances they can be any other value and you can also measure them for example the h cost of d node d is 1 here so if you look at here what was the h cost h cost was what is the definition of h cost h cost is the uh costs from goal to the current node so the, if you if you want to define the h cost of d it will be the distance or the cost from d to f which is actually 3 okay but here it is they have mentioned it one as long as the cost 
edge cost is less than the actual actual cost equal or less then solution is will be fine but if the edge cost is more than the actual cost then your a star algorithm will not work properly it will give not the best path so similarly the edge cost of other nodes are also given so let's try to find the shortest path from a to f okay and let's see how we can do that so first we have to define here op uh, close list and open list so this will be our closed list which is a list of visited nodes okay and so and then we have open list okay so let's start from node a so we make it node a as our current node this is our current node now and we put it in the close list a is in our close list and then we we look at the adjacent nodes that are adjacent to node a so these nodes are b and c so and now we have to calculate the f cost for b and c so b and c are the are the adjacent nodes and we have to put them in the open list because we have just explored them we have discovered them b and c nodes are in the open list and a is in the closed list so let's calculate the f cost f cost of b here we shall calculate the f cost um, f cost of node b is equal to its g cost g cost is uh, is the distance between start to your current node which is 3 here it's mentioned the edge so 3 plus and then we have to add the let's make it look like 3 okay and the h cost of the of the b which is we, which we can see from the table which is 4 so 3 plus 4 is equal to 7 so the f cost of node b is 7 okay so we write down here or okay we later we'll write down later and we have calculated the f cost for b and now for c f cost for node c is equal to so we see that the g cost for the node c which is the distance between distance between the starting node and your current node which is 5 and then the edge cost for c which is 5 so 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 okay now we have uh, explored the adjacent nodes we have calculated their cost the next step is to um, select the node with the minimum f cost so from here you can see which one has the minimum f cost of course the node number node b has a minimum so what we do we we make b as our current node this will be our current node now and we also put it in the closed list and we remove it from the open list okay 
So now in open list we have only node C. Now we shall explore the adjacent nodes to B. Like we did with node A, we explored its neighbor. Now we are at node B and we explored its neighbors or the adjacent nodes. So what are the um, what are the neighbors of we have A, C, E, D. A is already has been visited. It's in a closed list so we cannot touch it. We have only C, E and D. Let's start with C. So now we look from from uh, from B. What is the F cost for for the node C? It will be three. Uh, it will be G cost, which is the uh, three plus two five. Okay, but and but you see that the three plus two five is the G cost, which is same as the G cost of the previous one. It's G cost, which is five already. So we shall not we shall not change this because uh, the G cost is not improving. The new G cost is not less than the previous one. Okay, the previous one was five, and the new one is also three plus two is five. So it's not less than previous one. That's why we don't change it. We let it like this. And then we go to uh, node E, and we calculate its F cost. So let's. F cost of node E is equal to G cost of node E. The G cost is 3 plus 3, the distance from the E to A, which is 3 plus 3. So it should be, it must be through node B because we are at node B now. Node B is our current node. So whenever we want to calculate the distance from starting point of E, it must go through node E because other distance can be here also. This is also an alternate distance. But since we are at node B, so this, this distance should be calculated from node B, so which is 3 plus 3, 6. So node E has a G cost of 6 plus node E has a F cost of, sorry, H cost of from a table 6 plus 2 is 8 total F cost is 8 um, then similarly we shall explore the uh, yeah one more thing we have to put also these uh, nodes these new newly discovered nodes in the open list E and D C is already there D and E we have to put them here because they are we have discovered them they are yet to be explored so now we calculate the F cost for the node D which is the distance from the source is 5 plus 3 is 8 so this G cost is 8 which is the distance from the starting node and its distance from the target node or the destination node is we can calculate we can get from here table which is 1 8 plus 1 is equal to 9 okay so from now from here we we see that uh, in our open list, which node has the minimum uh, minimum F cost? Look at C has a cost of 10, D has a, E has a cost of 8, D has a cost of 9. So clearly E has the minimum F cost. 
so now we what we do we make e as our current node and we put it in the close list here e and we remove it from the open list so now we are at e node e from here we explore its neighboring nodes nodes which are not yet visited so it has a node c node b d and f b has been already visited c is already have been discovered it's an open list and then we have d and f which are not yet f uh, d has already been uh, explored or it's already in the open list but f is a new node so let's now uh, put these new nodes in the open list so we have d is d and c is already there but we have f that has to be placed here in the open list now calculate the uh, f cost for these nodes so first of all we can try to calculate the uh, the g cost so the g cost of c um, if we make it from node e it will be 4 plus 3 plus 3 it will be 10 which is more than the previous the actual g cost of the node c which was 5 so clearly it's we shall we will not we shall not do it because the new cost is 10 the previous cost is 5 so it's, the new cost is more than the previous so we shall not change it we let it like this and then we have node d node d has the new d and the new g cost for node d will be uh, 4 plus 3 and it will also be 10 but the previous g cost of the node d was 8 5 plus 3 which was so the new one actually new one is more than the previous one so we we shall not change it also we let it like this so now let's calculate the f cost for node f so f cost for node f is equal to g cost of node f which will be uh, 3 plus 3 plus 3 Uh, you, you notice that why we uh, how we are calculating the this cost the g cost why we are going in this way because uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention here the the parent concept so when we say that when we came from b to e so it means that uh, e uh, so b is the parent of e or e is a child of b so it's so when we write down the parent the parent its parent will be b the node b has a parent a okay because you remember we came from we started with node a and then we we came to node b and after that we came to node e so that's how we came. So this means that B is a parent B has a parent A and E has a parent B. Okay. So now when we uh, E is our current node and we are exploring other nodes and we want to find the cost, the G cost of the node F, which is the distance from the starting node, then we have to calculate this distance distance between node E and F and then 
distance between node E and its parent node and then distance between node B and its parent node. This will be the total distance here. So which, which is like 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9. This will be the G cost and now we have to calculate the F cost for node F because F cost is the distance between the current node and the and the no no not sorry current node not current node uh, the the node that we want to calculate the distance and the target node but here the target node and the adjacent node you can say they are at the same location they are same actually we want to tell f is also a target node and if we want to calculate the distance between target and target it is zero okay so that's why our here the h cost is zero here so the total f cost will be nine here so now we have um, we have uh, explored all the nodes and calculated their f cost and now it's time to select the node with minimum uh, f cost that is present in the open list here so let's see c has a cost of 10 d has a cost of 9 and f has a cost of 9 so one one more thing is that if two nodes if two nodes have the same eight uh, f cost here for example here these two nodes have d and f they have same uh, f cost nine and now we have to select which one which one should we select so we shall always select the node which has the which has less h cost okay so this is the decision criteria. So both have the F cost of 9. So what we want is a node with minimum uh, F cost. So we cannot do that here but we there is another criteria. We select the node with less uh, H cost which is node F and we make it as our uh, current node. Okay and we put it in the close list and we remove it from the open list here and now you see that f we have reached actually, actually the target position our goal and so and uh, where we came from which was the previous node before f which where we were present it was E so the parent of F is E so from here we start now we want to now we want to uh, find a path we have reached the goal we have we have searched our goal now it's time to locate the path I think it's clear now it's not that difficult now you just have to follow the parents. The parent of F is E. Okay. The parent of E is B. And the parent of B is A. So that's how we find the shortest path. Okay. From start to our goal location. So whenever now the robot will move from position A to F and it has to follow the shortest path, it will follow this path here on the green line and reach the goal point. And the total, uh, the total length of this path is 9. It can be 9 meters or if you are you're talking about in terms of time it can be nine seconds if you're talking about fuel it can be nine uh, liters 
anything but the cost is 9 okay so this is how a star helps to 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 find the shortest path this graph was not so big so that's why we have explored almost all the nodes but if let's imagine if there are some nodes on this side also on the left side of the starting node then then uh, the advantage of a star is that it will only explore the nodes near to the your goal or near to your target position the other nodes it will not explore it will not, not explore all the nodes and that, that's how it will save time that's how it is better than Dijkstra's algorithm Dijkstra's algorithm explore all the nodes in the graph but a star algorithm because it already knows that uh, where in which direction your goal is located or your target point is located so that's why it explores it tries to explore nodes only in the direction of your goal and it saves time Now let's apply A star algorithm for your a grid map, a discrete binary map. So this is our start location, these are the obstacles we have, and this is the our target or the goal location. So this grid has five five rows and five columns, and total we have 25 cells in this grid. So again this grid will have a uh, four connectivity for for uh, to make things easier we only consider four connectivity which means that each node will be connected to four other nodes only only horizontal and vertical connection we consider and we ignore the diagonal connectivity Okay, so starting from a node, uh, our starting node, start node. So what we do, we calculate that. Okay, the distance between the two nodes. If we take it one here, okay. When we move from one cell to an another cell, it, let's say it's one meter. We cover one meter distance. Okay. So, so when we move from this node, starting node, to the neighboring node, we 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 tell okay how much g cost it has. So we write down g cost here. So this is the g cost, and because we move from here to the neighboring node and now we have to write down the f cost of this node so what is the f cost for this node f cost is the and you remember the we have we have in the previous lectures we have studied about the uh, manhattan distance and euclidean distance so what was the manhattan distance Sorry for my handwriting. Okay, Manhattan distance was, um, if you want to calculate this is point 0.1, this is point, okay, let's say this is P1, and this is P2. If you want to calculate the distance between these two points using Manhattan distance, so it will be this distance, your x component plus y component. So your Manhattan distance d will be 
x plus y. Okay, but this is but if you consider Euclidean distance, then it will be this this shortest distance from point P to P1 to P2, like this diagonal distance, okay, uh, which will be under under root of x square plus y square. But we only consider for simplicity because this is the four connectivity. There is there are no diagonal connections. So that's why we don't consider this diagonal Euclidean distance. We only consider the simple addition of the two distances. So um, we studied that uh, the f cost, uh, sorry, the, the d cost is the distance between your current node, sorry, your uh, the your adjacent node to your previous node. Okay, sorry, your starting node. So, uh, so the distance between this node and the starting node is one, okay, because it's one step away, and this will be of a g cost, and we have written here the g cost is one. And now, cal now calculate the g cost, sorry, the h cost of this node, which is the Manhattan distance from this node to the your your goal node or the target node so it will be how much it will be it is one two three four so this is four steps away one two three four so it's four the distance is four meters And the total F cost is G plus uh, G plus your H cost, which is four plus one, but one plus four, which is five. And its parent is parent node is this one. We we use arrow for this. Okay. So this is how we define this one is the g cost here this is the h cost and this is the f cost which is the sum of g and h cost and this arrow represents where we came from which was the parent node and similarly we do this for this node also so this node has a g cost of 1 and h cost is 1 Two, three, and four, and the total f cost is five, and its parent is we came from here. Okay, so now we have explored the neighboring nodes, and now we see that which is the uh, which is which has a minimum f cost. Both have the same, and then we see which one has the Minim if both have the same as cost, then we look at which one has the minimum So both has also uh, Same f h cost also now we select a randomly any of the Any of the node so we select this one here and now from and we From here we from here we uh, now explore the neighboring adjacent nodes to this node and we have one and two two adjacent nodes to this node and then we try to calculate their g cost and what the g cost will be one plus one which is two and its its h cost will be one, two, three, four, five, and the total cost will be f f cost will be seven, and its parent will be we came from here this node, okay? And similarly for this node, we calculate the g cost will be this will be one plus one and two. 
and then the edge cost will be from this node 1, 2, 3. The F cost will be 5. And its parent will be this one. Okay. So now we have we have uh, calculated this one. Now we have three nodes in the open list. This, this, and this. So which one has the minimum uh, minimum F cost? Five, five, seven. So five is the minimum. Both these two nodes have the same value. And you remember we we decided that. We said that okay, if they both have same value, then we decide based on their H cost, which one has a minimum or less H cost. So this one has a H cost of three. This one has a H cost of four. So clearly this one has the less value. So we select this one and make it as our current node here. And then we explore its neighbors. So this one has uh, uh, one, two and three neighbors and this one has already been discovered this has already been visited and it's now in a close list um, i think if we number them then it will be easier for for us to to remember and put them in the list also so let's let's number them let's alphabetically number them let's say We have here this node is A, this is B. So I have filled them using alphabets and also we make a open and close this also. So this is our closed list and this is our open list here. Okay, so in the close list we have been we have visited A. So A will be in close list here. And then we have visited this node here, which is node number B. So B will be also in our, in our close list. And then we from here we have we we have explored uh, the two neighbors here and then we said that okay which nodes were in the so the nodes that were in open list previously they were B and F because when we were at A the open list was B and F so when we came at B we remove the node B from open list and put it in the close list and then we explored its neighbor and the neighbors were C and G so we'll post C and G in the open list here so C and G now are in the open list and then we said okay now in the open list which one has the minimum F cost and then we said okay they both have F and G has 5 cost and then we decided based on, on their heuristic uh, H cost that node G has the less H cost. So we selected G. So we remove G from the open list and place it in the closed list. Okay, so now G is our current node and we are at node G and now we explore the explore the neighbors of, of the node G. So this is G here and G has a neighbor H. Let's calculate its G cost. Its G cost will be 1, 2, 3. Okay. 
Okay, not with, you have to put with a green one here. So three will be its G cost and its H cost will be one, two, three and four. Or it could be another way, one, two, three, four. Manhattan distance will be four. Three plus four, the H cost will be seven and its parent is G. We came from here, this node, okay? Okay, now the second node in the open list is F and if we try to calculate the G cost for, of node F from G node, it will be uh, 2 plus 1, 3 which is greater than the original G cost so we don't change it, we let it like this. And if we look at another neighbor of the G which is B, B is already in the closed list so we cannot do anything. So we let it like this. So now in the open list we see which node has the, sorry we forgot to put H in the open list now. Have it done, have to change the color, so okay. So H is now in the open list. And now we look in the open list which which node has the minimum F cost. So in open list we have F, C and H. F, C and H. So here we have F, F node F has the minimum cost. So what we do, we remove F from the open list and we put it in the close list here. And make it as a current node and then we could try to calculate the calculate its uh, life costs of its neighbors its neighbors are one and two node a and g which have been already visited the other side the node is blocked okay there's an obstacle they're not allowed to move there so we let it like this f node uh, we cannot go anywhere from here. So now we again we look at our in our open list which one which node has the minimum F cost. So again we have two nodes they have same F cost. Now we look at their H cost value and clearly node H has the less H cost which is 4. So we make it as our current node and we remove it from the open list we place it in the close list and now we explore its neighbors so H has a neighbor I and G uh, G has already been visited so we only look at I so I its G cost will be 3 plus 1 which is 4 its age cost will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And its F cost will be 4 plus 5, which is 9. And we say its parent, we came from here. So its parent is node H. So we have explored a new node I. We put it in the, in our open list here. Okay, now we we look in our open list which one has the minimum uh, minimum value of the F cost. We have node we have node C and I. Node C and I. Of course, node C has the minimum F value. So what we do? We remove it from the open list and we place it in the closed list here and now make it as a current node and explore its neighbors when we explore its neighbors the others are already visited and we what we can do we can go here and calculate its g cost will be 3 plus 2 plus 1 3 and its h cost will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 
6 and the total cost will be 3 plus 6 9 and its parent will be here okay so now in the sorry we have explored a new node we have to put it in the open list so we have placed o in the open list here okay so o is now in the open list now we have to find which node in the open list has a minimum um, minimum f cost so we have i and o these two nodes and both have the same f cost but this one have a node i has a less h cost so we select this one so we remove i from the open list put it in the close list make it as a current node now we see its neighbors so node i has a neighbor j and k and we calculate their g cost 4 plus 1 5 it will be g cost and h cost will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay and the total cost will be 11 and its parent is we came from this direction and similarly we do for this 4 plus 1 5 and the h cost will be 1 2 3 4 total cost will be 9 and we and we put j and k into the open list k and j both are now in the open list now we see in the open list which node has the minimum f value we have o node o is 9 node j is 11 and k is 9 so k and o they both have 9 now we look which one have a minimum h cost which is 4 node num node k so we select we remove node k from here and put it in the close list and make it as a current node now we are we are at the node k now and from node k now we look at its neighbors it has a neighbor l and p okay two neighbors that are undiscovered and they are adjacent to node k so we put them l and p l and p in the open list and we now calculate their g cost and f costs so 5 plus 1 6 is the g cost and its h cost will be 1 2 3 4 5 The total F cost will be 11 and its parent will be K. Similarly, we do for node P 5 plus 1, 6 and its cost will be 1, 2, 3. Total will be 9 and its parent will be this one. Okay. Now we have, we see again in the open list which one has a minimum uh, F cost. So in the open list we have O, J, L, P. O, J, L, P. Clearly O and P, they have 9 minimum cost. And in the, in these two, because they are same, so we look at their H cost will be, which are 3 and 6. Clearly, node P has a less H cost. So we select node P. We remove it from the open list. We put it in the close list and make it as a current node. Now we are at node P. So node P, we look at its neighbors, which are Q. Sorry, this was node, uh, not O. This was node D. D okay not O. <clears throat> it looks like D, that's why I didn't notice that. 
So now node P has neighbors Q, O, U and K. K has already been visited. It's in the closed list. So the, the newly discovered neighbors are Q, U and O. So O, Q and U. So we put it in the in the open list. O Q and U. So from now we calculate their F cost first calculate the G cost which will be six plus one seven and the H cost will be one two three four and their F cost will be 7 plus 4 which is 11 and its parent will be this one here and now we calculate the G cost of node O which will be 6 plus 1 7 its H cost will be 1 2 and the total will be 9 F cost will be 9 and its parent is this one and for the node u 6 plus 7 will be the g cost the h cost will be 1 2 and total will be f cost will be 9 and parent will be p okay um, now in the open list let's see which node has the minimum F cost. So in the open list we have node D, J, L, O, Q, U. <clears throat> D and J, L, Q they have. So these nodes J, L, Q they have 11. So they are out of the competition. A node we have node u o u o and d so these have the the minimum f costs but they are same so we look at now on their h cost so from the h cost clearly o and u has uh, less h cost so what we do now they also are the same so we select randomly any of two of them so we select let's say we select uh, u so when we select u u has <coughs> u has two neighbors which are undiscovered two neighboring nodes that are undiscovered and which is v and t okay so let's put them in the open list T and V. So U, we remove it U from the open list and place it in the closed list now. So we are now at node U. So let's calculate the cost of the newly discovered nodes. For, for V, it will be 7 plus 1 is equal to 8. The heuristic will be 1, 2, 3. And the total cost will be 11. F cost. And its parent is U. For T, the G cost will be 7 plus 1, 8. H cost will be 1. And the total cost will be 9. And his parent will be U. So now we uh, we have discovered. Now see which one in the open list, which one have the minimum F cost. Clearly, these nodes T U, sorry T O, T B Q O. These nodes have the same cost which is 9 and now we decide based on their h cost 
clearly know t has the minimum h cost so we remove node t from the open list and place it in the closed list this is node t here and now this is our node t is our current node so from node t we look at its neighbors the neighbor on the right side we have u which has been already in the closed list here so that's why we we cannot do anything here when we look at neighbor on the top of it and its neighbor o node o node o is not in the closed list but it's in the open list yes here so it means we can again try to calculate the g cost let's say if it is less than the previous g cost then we shall change it so now 8 plus 1 9 so, but it has already 7, which is less than the new one. So, we don't change it. We let it like this. So, we now we look at the other neighbor, which is node S. Node, we try to, we, this is a newly discovered node. So, we place it in the S, in the open list. And we calculate its G cost, will be, which will be 8 plus 1, 9. We calculate its h cost which is zero because uh, h cost is a distance between your uh, the your adjacent node to the target node but this time the adjacent and the target node are same so that's why the distance is zero the total distance will be f cost will be nine and its parent is node t so now we have reached the reached the target node or the goal node and what we do we now uh, here we should stop the algorithm the a star algorithm will stop here and now we shall we shall see which how to we have find the path find the goal now we shall see how to locate the path let's change the color of our pointer to so let's make it to make it a little bit brown so from here we just follow the parent of this node where we came from starting from node s we came from okay let's came from node t and then from node t we came from node u and then p and then k and then to here i think we haven't mentioned it where we came from node k it must be node i because there is no other option and from node i we came from the parent node is H from node H it is node G and then node B and finally node A. So this is our path generated by the Dyke sorry the A star algorithm. And so whenever the robot want to move from this A to S, it will follow this path and this will be the shortest path and what is the total length of this path you can calculate here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so the 9 will be the which is total 9 meter long it's the robot has to travel a distance of 9 and you see that here one more thing is that the there are some unexplored nodes okay and if there are more nodes on this side here on the other side that will not not be explored by the a star algorithm and that's how a star algorithm saves time and space if you compare this uh, this with the dijkstra's algorithm you remember the dijkstra's algorithm explored all the nodes each and every node okay but 
that's why Dijkstra's algorithm require more time and more space and if there are thousands of nodes then this will be very time consuming and space consuming that's why Dijkstra's algorithm is computationally expensive and same is true for breadth first search algorithm but a star algorithm it doesn't explore all the nodes it's just no explore the nodes that are in direction to the your goal node and that's how it saves time and space and it's less computationally expensive 